Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our Aural InfoBite video today. Uh, we're going to be talking about audiology appointments and hearing testing in this video, but before we get into that, I need to give you the answer to last time's video, which was D, all of the above. So we picked three random people from YouTube and three from Facebook who got that right. So the three from YouTube were Jenny L, Cheryl Bostock and Real Ruler 2112 and the three people we picked from Facebook were Heather Benson, uh, Ruth Ann Hebert and Megan Black. So well done to you guys for getting the answer to that one right. So what we're going to be talking about in today's video is uh, audiology appointments and hearing testing, okay? Now, the World Health Organization uh, published a report last week on World Hearing Day, which gave a statistic which kind of shocked me a little bit, I've got to be honest, that one in five people in the world uh, live with a hearing loss which is a staggering amount of people. Now, one of the recommendations that the World Health Organization put forward was to try and increase hearing screening. Now, what I thought we'd do a video on today is to talk about what that actually means and what uh, to expect if you come along for an audiology appointment and you get a hearing test. Now, here at Audiology Associates, we've always offered free hearing testing and we always will. The reason being is we really want people to start thinking about their hearing and to take action if they notice any problems. Now, if we can break down as many barriers as we can for a person coming in to do that, uh, then that's all for the better. So if you ever wanted a hearing test done, you can book in with us. It's completely free of charge and we will do a full hearing assessment on you and check what your hearing levels are like. But what does that entail? So when you come along for this type of appointment, the first thing we would normally do is we do a little bit of history. So we need to look at what prompted you to come along for the appointment today? Is there any history in your family? Is there any history with yourself of ear problems? So we go through a few questions first of all, just to get a bit of background about you and your hearing issues. Once that's done, we tend to then do a little bit of a toscopy. Now, a toscopy is the term we use for looking in someone's ears. So you've obviously seen our videos on YouTube where we're taking wax out. So we use an endoscope to do our otoscopy, but you can use a, a, what they call an oroscope as well, which is a little lighted lens that you can take a look in someone's ear with, which is what you normally have a look in when you're at the GPs. Now, once we've done some otoscopy uh, and everything looks nice and healthy and it all looks good, we're looking out for things like, are there any blockages in there? Does the ear canal look nice and healthy? Is the eardrum looking good? We actually did a little short video on this, which I'll put a link to in the description below and a little card up above for you to look at as well. If all that is looking nice and healthy, the next thing we're gonna do is the bread and butter of all audiology appointments is a hearing test, okay? Now, hearing testing is known as pure tone audiometry. And uh, when we do a hearing test, we split the test into two parts, which I'll explain for you in a second. So before we go into the hearing test, if we just have a little recap, we know that when we hear sound, it's vibration in the ear passing down the ear canal, stimulating the eardrum, vibrating it, passing it through the bones into the inner part of the ear, to the cochlea, stimulating those little hair cells, which then fires a nerve impulse up to the brain. That's how the hearing pathway works. Now, the first test we're gonna do when we do a hearing test is something called ear conduction. Now, ear conduction is when we put either a set of headphones on your ears or a little set of inserts into your ears and we play different sounds at different levels through those headphones. So what we do with this one is we test various different pitches from very deep tones to very high pitched squeaky tones and then we do it at different levels. So we're trying to establish the, the, the quietest sound you can hear for each of those pitches of sound. Now, the way we do that is when we present a sound, we give you either a little button to press or you can pop your hand up if you hear a sound. And that way then it notifies us that you've heard it and we carry on through the test. And what this does, it allows us to build up a picture of your hearing. And we plot all that information on a graph called an audiogram. Now, when we look at an audiogram, it's a very simple thing to take a look at. You have different little symbols on there, but we have circles and we have crosses for ear conduction. Now, crosses are refer to your left ear response and circles refer to your right ear response. The further up the graph those appear, the quieter the sounds are. And then we've got very deep sounds to the left side of the graph and very high pitched sounds to the right side of the graph. So if you ever see an audiogram, you can get a rough idea of what you're looking at. Now, at that point, if the patient then has perfectly normal hearing, what we would normally do is explain those test results to you, uh, explain how to look after your ears moving forward and what good ear practice is, and then you'll be on your way. If we establish during that ear conduction testing that there is a hearing loss there, so if some of those points start to fall down the graph a little bit, 
then what we'll need to do then is establish what is causing that problem. Why is this hearing issue there? Now, don't forget the ear conduction tests the whole hearing pathway. So it gives you an overview of what your hearing is like, but it doesn't tell you where the specific problem lies. So we need another test to do that. So the second test we would normally do is something called bone conduction. Now, bone conduction involves putting a little box on the back of the ear just here, a very tiny one. Uh, it's connected to a headband. It sits quite tightly against the back of the ear there and it vibrates on the skull which means that instead of passing the sound through as an air conduction response we're passing the sound through by vibrating the skull so it's passed through the bone which is where the bone conduction name comes from so what that means is that you're not using the outer and middle part of the ear to transfer that sound through you're sending the sound straight to the cochlea to stimulate those little hair cells so when you get those sets of test results, they appear as little triangles or little brackets. And what we look at is the difference between where they fall on the graph. If the ear conduction and bone conduction results fall one on top of the other, then that shows us that that patient has what they call a sensory neural hearing loss. So there's no issue with the sound getting transmitted through to the inner part of the ear, but the problem lies with the cochlea and those little hair cells. If, on the other hand, we do the test and we end up with a big difference, so the bone conduction results appear much higher up the graph than the ear conduction results, it shows us that when we stimulate the cochlea, we get a much better response than when we pass the sound down the whole hearing pathway, which means that we've narrowed that, that down to being an issue with the outer part of the ear or the middle ear space. Now that type of hearing loss is called a conductive hearing loss. So if you have, uh, say, a perforated eardrum, you have fluid behind the eardrum, or any problem with the ossicles, then what will happen is it will dampen that sound so your ear conduction results will be much lower than your bone conduction results, which is sending the sound straight to the cochlea. Now, sometimes what you can get is a mixture of those two things going on at the same time. So your bone conduction results will be better, but not within normal limits, and that's known as a mixed hearing loss. So that shows us there's a problem with the sound getting to the nerve, and there's also a little problem with the hair cells and the nerve on the inner part of the ear as well, okay? So, if you had a conductive or a mixed hearing loss, what would happen then? Well, in a lot of these cases, we'd need to send you through to see an ear, nose and throat specialist who can look at your test results, look at the anatomy of the ear and see whether there would be anything they could do, possibly surgically, to repair those problems and give you better hearing. Well, that's fine, but what if you've got a sensory neural hearing loss? What if there's a problem with the cochlea itself? How do we help in that situation? Well, what we would normally do with that type of patient is we would talk to them about getting some hearing aids to try and help them to hear better. Uh, a hearing aid will boost the sound up, make it easier for them to hear, give them some clarity, uh, give them some sharpness back to that speech again. And we would go through all those options with the patient. Now we're gonna cover hearing, aid, hearing aids in, next, uh, in the next video in a little bit more detail. So this is just a general overview here. So what you can see there is when we use our ear conduction testing, we're testing the whole hearing pathway. When we're using the bone conduction testing, we're just testing the cochlea itself and those little hair cells on the inside. And depending on how those two sets of test results come out will depend on where we end up sending the patient and what type of help that patient will get. Great, well done. So our question for today's video is bone conduction testing tests which part of the hearing pathway? Is it A, the whole hearing pathway, or is it B, just the cochlea? So bone conduction testing uh, stimulates which particular part of the ear? Is it the whole hearing pathway, which is uh, answer A, or answer B, is it just the cochlea itself? Post your answer into the comment section below. We will pick three random people from YouTube and three from Facebook uh, who got the answer right, and we will give them a shout out in the next video. Well guys, I hope that made perfect sense to you all, and I thank you for listening today. And uh, as always guys, look after your ears, look after yourselves, look after one another, and I shall see you again for the next video. Take care, everybody.